How healthy are the world's oceans? What are some of the biggest threats that humans pose to those oceans? Those are just a couple of the questions that Dr. Susan Shaw thinks about every day. She is a marine toxicologist and the founder of the Marine Environmental Research Institute in Blue Hill, and she's with us here on 207. Thanks for coming in. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. It's good to be here. Let's go back to that first question. Overall, how healthy are the oceans right now? There is growing concern that the oceans are becoming more and more polluted and more and more uh, degraded from man-made uh, toxic chemicals, waste, and uh, plastics. Um, all the billions of tons of toxic substances that go into the oceans every year. Um, is this something that has been accelerating as, as the world gets more industrialized, as, as economies grow, more people in the world are using more resources? Does this trend just get worse? Unfortunately, it is a, a result of the industrialization that we're living in today. Um, our oceans are actually dying at a faster rate than predicted. We're seeing the loss of coral reefs. We've lost about 50% worldwide. And marine mammals, seals, dolphins, and whales, about a third of those are in danger of going extinct. What specifically is causing it? Is it, uh, I, I mean, there are, a lot of, there are a wide range of things, or is it impossible to say that there's one specific thing? Is it just that there are so many threats right now? It's a good question. It's actually a cumulative stress situation. There's pollution, there's climate change, and there's over-exploitation, which includes overfishing and the kind of over-exploitation that's going on when we're drilling offshore for fossil fuels. If we were to walk out the door and go down to the shores of Casco Bay, just a mile or so away, uh, would the water be cleaner now than it was, say, 40 or 50 years ago when there was sewage being pumped directly into the ocean? I have to say there's some improvement, and uh, in Casco Bay there's been a an upward trend to get rid of some of that kind of, of, of problem, but overall the oceans are becoming more toxic. And I know that from my own work. I've been looking at the impact of toxic chemicals in this environment all the way down to New York from eastern Canada and measuring, actually doing forensics, measuring toxic chemicals that are building up in the food web and getting into the top predators like the seals. We have a program that's been going now for about 12 years called Seals as Sentinels. And from that work, I do know there's a huge buildup of toxic chemicals in tissue of fish and marine mammals. So that's what we're concerned about. These are chemicals that we're using now in commerce, like in everyday products. We put flame retardants into the foam in our furniture, the foam in our mattresses, the foam in even like baby strollers. We put flame retardants into television sets, the plastics. We put it into our computers. And all those chemicals are breaking down and finding their way into the oceans, which are the final sink for them. So when we eat fish, we're eating all that nasty stuff? We certainly are, and w it's one of the problems we have is w what, what is in the fish we're eating. Fish contain the highest levels of some of these toxic chemicals that are persistent, including the brominated and chlorinated flame retardants. So it is a, a problem for us as well. It, uh, the problems with the oceans are really a survival issue for people. It's a pretty bleak picture that yeah. you're painting. Are there any bright spots? I think we have to start looking at it and really addressing the pollution issue square on. One of the things our institute is doing is launch, we're going to be launching a, a campaign uh, to, to deal with ocean toxics. We're calling it STOP, Stop Toxic Ocean Pollution. We, we all can do something. We can know, first of all, we, it's awareness raising, the knowledge that we're using products that contain toxic chemicals is powerful. People don't want to have toxic chemicals in their mattresses, on their, in their sofa, in their baby stroller. So what's the step that the average person who's watching you right now and listening to you and is distressed by what you're saying, but is thinking, what can I, as one individual, do? What's the answer? What can individuals do? 
individuals can become informed about toxic chemicals that are, they're exposed to every day. Most of us are unaware that we're exposed to hundreds of chemicals in our daily lives. So that's one thing. Now, how do you do that? Be, be, by becoming involved with organizations such as ours, Marine Environmental Research Institute, and others who will supply that kind of information so we can bec become informed consumers. That's step one. I, I, step two would be think about the environment. Think about the oceans when you vote. Your, your vote is tremendously important in that way. And then uh, step three is tell other people we are going to be starting a very um, engaging advocacy campaign and uh, we're going to roll that out in a couple of months. And there, that's one way you can do something is to get involved with organizations. All right, if people want to find out more about your organization, it's easy to do. We have links on our website. Just go to the 207 page of WCSH6.com. You'll find more information about Dr. Shaw and about the Marine Environmental Research Institute and the issues that we've been discussing. Stay with us. We're going to be back with more of 207 right after this.